The tropics are continuing to heat up as we do have now a major hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean. Another hurricane expected to form right behind that one. And we also have some news on the potential for a tropical system to develop in the Gulf of Mexico as we go into next week. And we'll also be talking about the overall weather pattern across the United States. Before we go into all of that, I have something that's even more important to talk about today. Many of you have heard about the tragedy that happened in the Southeast United States last week with catastrophic flooding and widespread wind damage damage from Hurricane Helene. Many families have been left without food, water, and other necessities. That's why today I am proud to announce our partnership with the Y'all Squad. The Y'all Squad is a 501c organization out of Pikeville, Kentucky, operated by Ryan Hall. With this partnership, we hope to help as many people as possible across this area and have already been all across the area helping many families in need. Just days after the event, the Y'all Squad was ready to go and loaded up a plane and flew over 30 different Starlink units to Asheville, North Carolina, and have already given them to state troopers to reconnect our first responders across the western portion of the state and get them back online so rescue efforts can begin. In addition to the Starlinks, the All Squad has brought multiple water and generator drops to areas like South Carolina and as well as Tennessee. In the description below, I have left a link if you would like to contribute to our own Max Velocity All Squad campaign that is near the top of the description. Now back to the video. And honestly, I think we are going to be doing great things over the next few weeks, so make sure you're following me on Twitter and as well as Facebook at Max Velocity WX and here on YouTube. We're going to continue to post updates on any sort of relief efforts that do happen. Now let's get right into what's happening across the Atlantic Ocean right now. A lot to talk about, actually, in the tropics. We have major Hurricane Kirk that is barreling off to the west and northwest right now, just off to the east of the Lesser Antilles. This thing is rapidly intensified overnight and is pushing towards Category 4 intensity as it does continue to move to the northwest. We also have another system behind that that is expected to become our next hurricane right after Kirk. So that'll likely become Leslie, and that'll likely become another hurricane over the next few days. And then back over in the Gulf of Mexico, just a large disorganized area of showers and thunderstorms we are expecting some gradual development as we go into the week and as well as into the weekend it is still very uncertain at this point on if we will actually see a tropical storm or hurricane but we're going to talk more about that here in a few minutes and why this is still going to probably bring impacts to the united states regardless of development Right now, we do have three areas that we are watching for across the Atlantic Ocean. We have Tropical Storm Leslie, Hurricane Kirk, which is again pushing towards a Category 4 hurricane, and then we also have a Lemon back over in the Gulf of Mexico. This indicates that we have a low chance of development in terms of a tropical depression or storm forming over the next seven days. If this does end up developing, it is more likely than not to pose a threat to the Southeast United States, which we will be talking more about here in just a moment. Now, this is the latest track from the National Hurricane Center on Hurricane Kirk. Again, notice the wind field. It's pretty large, but again, it's not anywhere near land. This is literally just going to be a fish storm. We're not expecting any landfall anywhere at this point, but it is going to continue to move to the northwest. It's going to continue to be a pretty intense hurricane, and then eventually, as we go into Saturday into Sunday, it will take a turn to the northeast, and it will basically be no impact to the United States. This might be something to watch for, though, over in Europe as we go into the later half of next week, so something to maybe watch for over there. And then we also have Tropical storm Leslie that has just recently formed. Again, notice it is going to be a tropical storm over the next few days. It really becomes a bit more uncertain what happens, I think, after Monday, but the general consensus is that this will become at least a Category 2 hurricane, and then from there, where does this exactly go? I think most models, and also honestly, I think as well, that this is just going to continue to go off to the northwest and more than likely just be another fish storm, as we do have a high-pressure system that should be able to steer this off to the north. With that said, just stay aware if you're back over in Bermuda. I think there's there's a very low chance this could maybe mingle over there, but I think we're not really going to see anything there uh, at this point, at least with Leslie or even Kirk. Now let's talk more about this potential Gulf of Mexico system, and to look at that, we're going to begin with the GEFS Ensemble members. This is essentially a group of models all embedded into one graphic that will give us an idea of if this could become something of interest, and if it does, how intense it could get, and also where it will track. And this is the most recent run. Again, notice this area just to the south here of Mexico. That is actually 
tropical depression 11 which is expected to become a tropical storm in the eastern pacific ocean now this is going to cross over a very mountainous region over the next 48 hours as it continues to move to the north but it will bring some energy into the gulf of mexico now here's the biggest question will that energy actually organize into anything as of right now most of the ensemble members have this as a very broad area of low pressure by sunday there's only one or two members that bring this to tropical storm intensity by sunday into monday so at this point at least through the weekend there's a very low chance of development but it will still bring impacts to the southeast and we'll, again we'll talk more about that here in a moment by monday into tuesday again the e g f e g oh my goodness members are all kind of all over the place with positioning and as well as intensity but not really any of these are showing tropical storm level intensity so that's good news there's only really one or two that indicate anything like that there's only one that's really near tropical storm levels just to the south there of louisiana and then there's one that's a big outlier that shows a category three plus hurricane in the southwestern gulf of mexico so either way at this point it is very uncertain if this actually develops but a lot of the time these ensembles do sometimes have a hard time actually grasping what's going to happen especially with a system like this so keep that in mind again this is not a perfect forecast by any means there's a lot of uncertainty which is hence why the national hurricane center still does have a 30 percent chance of development but i would say at this point if something does develop in the gulf of mexico it's not going to be in a very favorable environment so i don't think we're going to get anywhere past a tropical storm but it is definitely going to be something to still watch for as even a tropical storm would still bring impacts to the united states now there is a reason why there is some concern regardless of development that this will bring Bring impacts to the United States and really the biggest thing is just going to be an abundance of rainfall especially back over in Florida as we go into Monday into Tuesday GFS just has this as a large broad area of circulation which will continue to penetrate moisture and rainfall across Florida as we go into Tuesday into Wednesday and just notice even into Thursday into Friday this thing just sits here in parts of the Gulf of Mexico so what this basically means is that we could see some pretty significant rainfall in Florida which could lead to flooding I mean the GFS model has this here for almost a week despite there not being much development it is still going to be a concern i think at least for florida in terms of rainfall so this is the latest gfs model run in terms of rainfall over the next seven days or so look at southern and central florida if this does happen we could be talking about a big rain event for central and southern florida perhaps some areas picking up five to twelve inches of rainfall and i definitely could see isolated locations seeing over a foot of rainfall easily if this does sit in the southeastern gulf of mexico but notice areas like you know mississippi georgia alabama they're barely going to pick up anything out of this mo mostly due to the high pressure that's going to be sitting off to the north and here's a full view at the united states which honestly the weather here across most of the lower 48 will be very calm and honestly if you're excited for thunderstorms you're not going to be excited about the next couple of weeks because overall the weather is going to be very very quiet we're going to be dealing with one low pressure system in canada this weekend that'll bring some rain to the northeast and then by tuesday wednesday and thursday of next week high pressure just continues to dominate across the entire country it is going to be very dry unless you're in florida or maybe back up in washington it's just going to be a very calm weather pattern there is a chance maybe as we go later into the month we start to see our first snowfall in the upper midwest but uh, again at this point the weather looks really really quiet it is crazy to say that but uh yeah the weather is really quiet right now here's what it looks like for rainfall over the next seven to ten days again barely anything if you're in the great plains midwest or ohio valley which areas like ohio desperately need rainfall northeast will pick up a cup maybe up to an inch of rainfall this weekend and then other than that it's going to be pretty dry there with that said that's all the weather that we have to talk about today thank you all for watching make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new and don't forget to check out the y'all squad fundraiser it's at the top of the description if you want to go check it out we are very close to hitting the ten thousand dollar goal for this fundraiser to help hurricane helene uh relief efforts across areas like south and north carolina tennessee virginia and several several other states thank you to anybody that has donated it really will go a long way to helping people that have been hit really hard by this hurricane we've also donated over a thousand dollars to several different charities here at the max velocity channel that would have not been possible without you guys so i do appreciate you guys watching our coverage over the last couple of weeks it's been a crazy ride and again hopefully all of this starts to get sorted out here soon hopefully everybody's able to recover very swiftly uh, in the southeast united states thank you so much for watching make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already